Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're going to go through a few examples of finding power sets. If you've done this a little bit, you probably know it can be a bit tedious and it can be a lot of writing, but we're going to go through it together. I'm assuming you already know what a power set is. If you don't, check the description for a link to a lesson I did on it. Put simply, given a set S, the power set of S, denoted P of S, is the set containing all subsets of S. So that's what a power set is. Is, and we're going to find, I think, four of them in this lesson. I encourage you for practice to try to find each one yourself before we go through the solution. For the first one, of course, we've got a classic, find the power set of the empty set. What the heck is that? Well, all we have to do is list the subsets. The only subset of the empty set is the empty set itself. The empty set itself is indeed a subset of the empty set. We know this relation is true because if the empty set wasn't a subset of the empty set, that would mean that the empty set contains an element that the empty set doesn't. And obviously that's not true because the empty set contains no elements. So the power set of the empty set contains just the empty set. And that is our answer. This is P of S. Take care to notice as well that this power set is not the empty set. It's the set containing the empty set. The cardinality of this power set is equal to one, as we would expect. Given any set, the number of subsets it has is equal to 2 to the power of its cardinality. The cardinality of the empty set is 0, so it has 2 to the power of 0, or 1 subsets. And the number of subsets is, of course, the cardinality of the power set. And I've got, I think, a couple lessons on this power set cardinality formula if you're interested. I'll try to remember to leave links in the description. All right, that's it. First example's done. Let's move on to example number two. We're just going up one element at a time. We started with the empty set. Now we've got a set S that has one element. What is the power set of S? Again, we just have to list the subsets. As we already said, the empty set is a subset of every set, so that's going to be a subset of S. And then another subset of S would be the set S itself. Remember that every set is a subset of itself, because if, for example, S was not a subset of S, that would mean that S contains something that S doesn't, and that wouldn't make any sense. So every set is a subset of itself. Now, how many subsets would we expect S to have? Well, it should have 2 to the power of its cardinality subsets, which is equal to 2 to the power of 1, which is equal to 2. Oh, look at that. We've listed two subsets, so we're done. That's the power set of S. All right, beautiful. Example number two done. Moving on to the next one, where we've got two elements in our beautiful set S. Sorry for using S so much. Maybe that gets a little confusing, but uh, we're going to stick with it. We're going to call it S. Again, we just got to list the subsets. Start off with the empty set, because that's a subset of every set. And then this set contains one and two. So we can start working with those. The set that contains just one is a subset of S. The set that contains just two. 2 is a subset of S, and the set that contains 1 and 2 is a subset of S as well. That, of course, is S. Now, how many subsets would we expect S to have? S has two elements, so it should have 2 to the power of 2 or 4 subsets. Oh, look, we've got 4 subsets. We're done. That is the power set of S. All right, now we get into the last two examples that have a bit more writing. We've got a set S that has three elements for this example. Let's go ahead and find its power set. Again, we can start off with the empty set. It's a subset of every set. Now, S has elements A, B, and C. So again, we'll start mixing those into our subsets. The set containing just A is a subset of S. The set containing just B is a subset of S. And the set containing just C is a subset of S. This is how I like to go about listing out the subsets. It helps to not miss anything and keep it in a logical order. I like to start off with the subsets that have zero elements, then one element, then two elements, and so on. So let's go ahead and move on to the two element subsets. The set containing A and B is a subset of S. The set containing A and C is a subset of S. The set containing B and C is a subset of S. And if you want to check your progress in the middle of listing out subsets, you can use a binomial coefficient to do that. So for example, how many subsets of S are there that have two elements? We've just listed out some, but have we listed out all of them? 
Well, the answer to that question, the number of two element subsets of S, is the number of ways that we can pick two objects from a collection of three objects, since S has three elements. And that, as you might recall, is a binomial coefficient, 3 choose 2, which is equal to, it's a nice formula, 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial uh, multiplied by 3 minus 2 factorial. There we go. And if you work out these factorials, you'll see that this is equal to 6, divided by 2, which is equal to 3. And we see we've got three two-element subsets, so we're good. All right, now we're going on to line 2. Got lots of subsets to write. Now we'll write all of the subsets that have three elements. That, in fact, doesn't take very long at all. The only subset of S that contains three elements is S itself, since those are all of the elements of S. So how many subsets should we have total if we've listed them all? Well, S has 2 to the power of its cardinality subsets. That's 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. What have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Looks good. We can go ahead and close our power set. And in fact, we don't even need two lines. Let me just move this stuff around a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. And then just add those last outer brackets to enclose everything in the power set. This is the power set of S. All right, now we've got something wild coming next, because now we've got to go. Let me put my check mark there. There's our power set. All right, we're going to deal with four elements now. Let's go ahead and start listing these subsets. First, we've got the empty set. Then we want to list all of our one element subsets. So the set containing two, the set containing just four, the set containing just six, the set containing just eight, and then that's it. So we can move on to our two element subsets. That's got, let's see, the set containing two and four is a two element subset. The set containing two and six. The set containing two and eight. That's a bad set bracket, but what are you gonna do? Let me fix it. All right, moving on to the next line. The next two element subset is the set containing four and six, and then the set containing four and eight. Then we've got the set containing six and eight, and I think that's all of the two element subsets. Let's use that same strategy we used before to check. S has four elements, and we're trying to count two element subsets. So four choose two, this is the number of ways we can create two element subsets from a set that has four elements, and it's equal to four factorial divided by two factorial times four minus two factorial. That's the top number factorial divided by the bottom number factorial times the top number minus the bottom number factorial. So if you work out these factorials, it comes out to be equal to 6. So how many two element subsets do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wonderful, we got them all, and we can move on to the three element subsets. So start counting those. There shouldn't be too many. We've got 2, 4, 6. Those make up one subset. And then we've got the set containing 2, 4, and 8. And then just one more, the set containing 4, 6, and 8. Actually, we've got one more that I missed, the set containing 2, 6, and 8. That's another three element subset. And we could check these the same way we did before. The number of subsets that contain three elements of a set with four elements is four choose three, which is equal to four. If you worked it out, that's what you would get. And we've got one, two, three, four subsets that have three elements. Then all we've got left is the subsets that have four elements, and of course the only one like that is the set S itself. The set containing two, four, six, and eight, and we've just listed all the subsets. To make sure we've got them all, how many subsets should S have? Well, it's got four elements, so it should have two to the power of four subsets, which is equal to 16. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Beautiful. We got them all. And then we just have to close this list in brackets to complete our power set. And there we go. That is the power set of S, all of its beautiful 16 elements. So those are just some examples of how I go about finding power sets and how we can check to make sure we're not making errors along the way. With any luck, no teacher is going to ask you to write out the power sets of a set with more than four elements. Even four elements is pretty cruel. You know, this is not much fun. 
But hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description.